Hello, welcome back. I'm Andy Brown. I'm the head instructor at the Climber School of Real Estate in Orlando, Florida. You know, at the Climber School of Real Estate, we feel like we're pretty much the best real estate school in all of Florida. And we feel like we prepare our students to pass the state exam pretty much better than anyone else, especially passing on the first try. We're so interested in helping our students and you pass the state exam. We have so many tools and everything for you to use on our, on our website, climberrealestateschool.com. I have a free 100 question practice exam. The last 10 are math. I have a YouTube video showing you how to do every single one. I just put up a new free math practice exam with 10 math questions, by the way. And it's number one. I'm going to put up a whole bunch more. This is question number three. And by the way, I really recommend you try the problem first before you go to the answer key or watch my YouTube video. All right, let's check out number three. Let's see here. The real estate taxes on a house are $3,560 per year. The closing date is April 21st. The day of closing belongs to the buyer. What's the prorated tax amount and how is it reflected on the closing statement? This is a proration question, chapter 14, if you recall. Kind of like everybody's favorite, if you know what I mean. When you get a proration question, on the state exam, you're going to get three things, I guarantee it. First, you have to know what exactly is the amount of whatever the charge is. In this case, it's the taxes. $3,560 per year. And by the way, this thing is important. You need to be aware. Is it year or month? Taxes are yearly. You have to know the closing date. The problem is going to give it to you. And it tells us the closing date is April 21st. Very important. There's something else you're going to get. You have to know who the day of closing belongs to. You know, they got to give it to somebody. Someone's responsible. They're giving or getting. In this case, the day of closing belongs to the buyer. How do I know? It's in the problem. The question is, well, what's the number for the proration? And by the way, it, how is it reflected for the buyer and the seller on the closing statement? On any proration problem, the first thing you do is you take whatever they're giving you as far as the taxes or rent. You have to figure out how much is it per day in whatever the period is? In our case, the period is a year. I believe there are still 365 days in a year, if I'm not mistaken. So $3,560 per year divided by 365 days gives you $9.75 per day. Every single day in that year is worth nine dollars and seventy-five cents in taxes. Well, now we got to figure out how many days did the seller own the house, and how many days will the buyer own the house? Taxes—they are charged on a calendar year from January first to December thirty-first. The problem tells us we're closing on April twenty-first. You know, in real life, tax bill doesn't come out until November the first. You can't pay your taxes on April 21st. You got months to go. The buyer's going to get the tax bill. The seller owned the house from January 1st to closing. The buyer owned the house from the closing date through the end of the year, so they each have their own portion they're responsible for. Let's see how many days. All right, we'll start with January. 31 days in January. 28 days in February, 31 days in March, but April, not that easy. April split. So let's take a look at April. There's 30 days in April. The problem says we're closing on April 21st. The seller owns the house in the first part of April. Then they close, and now the buyer owns the house in the second part of April. The problem told us the buyer is responsible for the 21st, and by the way, that's all we need to know. So, the 21st to the 30th belong to the buyer. That means, that has to mean the seller, they're responsible for the 1st to the 20th, which also tells me 20 days in April. Here we go. 
Now, we're going to add them all together. That means seller is responsible for 110 days worth of taxes. Didn't we just say every day is worth $9.75? hundred and ten days times nine dollars and seventy five cents a day is one thousand seventy two dollars and fifty cents that means that the seller has to give the buyer one thousand seventy two dollars and fifty cents to cover their portion of the year the buyer will pay the rest but there's a second part to this question How's it reflected on the closing statement? I got a trick for you. Every single proration question on the state exam is exactly the same. Credit to the buyer, debit to the seller. You don't even actually have to know how to figure it out. Watch this. Credit buyer, debit seller. What do you think about that? Now, in real life, a credit is when you're getting the money, which the buyer is, and a debit is when you're paying the money, which the seller is. The seller's paying the money to the buyer. Credit buyer, debit seller. But again, little Andy Brown Climber School of Real Estate trick for you. All your proration questions on the state exam are exactly the same. Credit to the buyer, debit to the seller. So the answer on your state exam would be $1,072.50 shown as a credit to the buyer and a debit to the seller. That's how we do it at the Climber School of Real Estate. Why don't you come to my famous two-day state exam cram course sales review. We give it twice a month and for a low fee you can come as many times as you want for six months. You know why? Because all, all we care about is helping you pass your state exam. Stay in touch. Try these and the other ones. And by the way, good luck.